much uh, for having me. Thank you, Patty and Gabriel and Daniel. This is really magical for me. In 2006, the Glasgow-based contemporary artist Lucy Scare embarked on an impulsive trip to Mexico City, following the unanswered correspondence she had sent to Leonora. Given Scare's conceptual reflections on the nature of visuality and mixed media approach to interrogating the image, for some audiences, her pilgrimage to meet a visual narrator like Leonora came as a surprise. Scare's meeting with the older artist is documented anecdotally, almost as if this epic journey occurred merely by happenstance, extracting the chance encounter from the surrealist repertoire of techniques, while simultaneously undermining the self-myth-making of one of surrealism's chief auteurs. As Scare writes, quote, the ongoing practice of surrealism suddenly seemed radical to me when thought about as current, a strategy of living by the irrational. However, when I arrived and announced at Carrington Shuttered House, the address at which I'd been given by a Texan collector, I was questioning the wisdom of my self-funded trip based on the whim and some late night internet booking. My romanticized idea of a quest to meet her seemed more than a little rash. I began to think that Carrington probably did not live at the address anymore, and even if she did, why would she see me? I felt I had a lot at stake when I banged on the door, which then slowly opened." End quote. So here, the corporeal figure of the real life behind the famous image is uh, surely the one holding the handle, directing the possibility of this narrative, meeting history. Yet Leonora is absented from uh, Scare's account, a fantasy figure in an unbelievable encounter. So I want to explore uh, what Leonora might mean to contemporary cultural practices, particularly in the realms of art and literature, because these are the realms that she herself inhabited. Um, and there's a growing canon of those who are starting to experiment with or be juxtaposed with Leonora's legacy. The folk musician, Laura Marling, contemporary artist, Kathy Wilkes, and illustrators Nicholas Netson and Emil Sion are just some of the many examples that I won't have time to cover today. And we can also think about uh, Madonna and Bjork from the 90s responding to Leonora Carrington's legacy. So here I can only focus on a small selection, two or three examples, namely uh, performance artists Samantha Sweeting and Lynn Liu, and the aforementioned conceptual artist Lucy Scare. Um, the idea of Leonora in contemporary practice is part of a much broader project, and I welcome your thoughts on what a Leonora artist might look like. So, one, exam one aspect of um, her practice has always fascinated me, and um, in terms of the historiography, the constant need to work out what animal Leonora most resembled, what kind of beast she might have been. And we've had all manner of rocking horses and unicorns and hyenas, uh, black cats and yetis. But because Leonora was a collector of culture, what Jonathan has um, termed a, a virtual collector, um, in terms of her multifaceted iconography, the creature I lean most towards is a magpie. And I, I know there is lop lop, um, but I'm kind of interested in this kind of potential gender flip between the horse and the bird. Um, in mimicking Carrington's own cultural borrowings, the contemporary sphere can be seen to have adopted this method, this magpie-like method of art making. Leonora herself is becoming a portable entity. So I'm quite interested in cultural practitioners who are using alternative media with which to represent or represent the possibility of Leonora and her work, namely performance and sound installation. Significantly, my chosen examples have occurred within the last decade, many overlapping with Leonora's lifetime. A younger generation of emerging aesthetic practices have both responded to and made room for figures such as Leonora, using a range of strategies from the intermediate to the conceptual, film to sound and performance-based installation. And I want to talk about some of this within the context of another medium, the curatorial, which is the strange kind of cat's 
proposal uh, that I do for a living. How do you curate the legacies of a virtual curator like Leonora? So last, last summer I uh, curated this exhibition of prints, photographs and experimental media at Leeds College of Art um, at our, our Blenheim Walk Gallery based on my long-term research on Leonora. The exhibition was titled Leonora Carrington slash Lucy Scare in an attempt to create a historical conflation between past and present and demonstrate how Leonora's work speaks to contemporary concerns and how her work might be accommodated by a 21st century language. The emphasis on creative practice repositions the importance of process, recognizing that our interests do not necessarily terminate in the art object itself, um, and that reflection is an ongoing idea. So this was a small but focused exhibition in which experimental media and performance objects were juxtaposed with Carrington's primary material of paintings, prints, and etchings. Indeed, I would suggest that the work of Leonora Carrington goes beyond painting. In the hands of this subsequent artistic generation, the interests, preoccupations, and recurrent themes of Leonora were summoned through a curated collective seance. The contemporary artworks were selected for their ability to channel Carrington. And as I said, a series of unfolding contemporary terms assisted in the clusters of this exhibition, intermediality, conceptual art, embodied anachronism, notions of, notions of intergenerationality, creative aging, and legacies were at the forefront of the curatorial rationale for this exhibition project. The ambition was not only to demonstrate Carrington's continued relevance, but also to reframe her career in contemporary terms, positioning her in dialogue with this younger generation. It also opened up a wonderful research possibility for cataloguing Victor Wynne's um, extensive collection of Carrington prints and paintings. So we were able to commission a wonderful essay from Susan A. Byrne um, and Marina Warner. Um, we also had a, a fantastic short story from Gabriel Weiss uh, entitled The Black Peacock and uh, a repurposed anecdote from Wynne entitled Tea with Carrington. <laughs> So Susan's essay, The Crock of Gold, Leonor Carrington and the Victor Wynne Collection, details some of the early student work, including such artworks as Still Life with Creature, endowing a typical pedagogical exercise with magical properties. And this felt important given the context of um, the college art gallery. Meanwhile, Marina Warner's essay, Badger, considers the bestiary of Carrington's imagination, honing in on the primacy of the badger and Leonora as a kind of underground dweller. Lucy Scare was extremely generous in her loans for this exhibition. For instance, I was able to secure examples of her Harlequin Is As Harlequin Does, a series of screen prints of Leonora's door, and these are on this slideshow. Um, and they were, they were taken in uh, 2012 after her death. Reviewing the exhibition, Professor Derek Horton noted that, quote, Scare's works are not intended as portraits of Carrington, but rather a means for the artist to examine her own practice through that of another, to find herself through finding Carrington." End quote. Um, I wasn't able to include Scare's entire cycle or installation, Leonora, which comprises two small sculptures, a short film, a large curved drawing, and a mahogany table inlaid with mother of pearl claws. Um, but as, as Scare explains, quote, in the installation that I've made, I've been wanting to break the logical links of my work. As you make a body of work, a logic emerges that you are using, and I think at some point you have to disrupt that in order to move forward or move sideways. And I needed a way of doing that. So my visit to Leonora Carrington became a kind of backbone for me being able to disassemble the logic of my own work whilst citing it within the historical context of her, not of her own work, but the existence of her, end quote. And that la la last clause, not her own work, but the existence of her, is of special significance to the continued presence of Carrington in the contemporary. In doing so, um, Scare disrupts Carrington's authorial influence in favor of a more elusive model that detaches itself from the referent in order to take on a new and infinitely more various existence. 
by evoking Carrington at several removes, Scare undoes the notion of allegiance and the master-slave-apprentice structure of mainstream art history, maintaining anachronism whilst questioning the notion of origins. So Scare's quotation without influence could be read as a highly conceptual reinterpretation. What I did manage to um, include in the exhibition was Leonora the Joker, a 16mm silent loop, um, which is approximately 45 seconds. Uh, from 2006, from her first visit. Uh, and this features Leonora's hands, interspersed with short clips of a washing line paint cabinet, and Leonora herself, wrapped in a shawl and holding a notebook. Attention is drawn to minor, though not entirely insignificant, details. Her hands are poised mid-gesture, as if holding the void, or flat on the table next to biscuits and an envelope. The short film offers a very abstract fragment of Carrington, as encountered by Scare, an established late surrealist being filmed by a younger, emerging conceptual artist who looks at the world in a necessarily different way due to her own cultural background and through an alternative lens, which inevitably shifts the focus. The title is, of course, significant. A joker is a playful and unruly figure, one who seeks to turn ideas on their head. Leonora is often referred to as the wild card in Scare's Love, an anomaly or disrupting force that helps the viewers rethink their visual categories. Furthermore, Carrington becomes a kind of avant-garde medium for Scare, both as a soothsayer or shaman, as well as an instrument for communication. Other documentary pieces by Scare based on the existence of Carrington continue to probe the minutiae of her domestic practices and erratic traces. The objectifying sensationalism of Carrington's grand age is undercut by uh, Scare's impish insistence on the banality of her daily human habits and creature comforts. The exhibition um, closed with a multimedia uh, installation entitled The Hearing Trumpet, um, which comprised uh, two keynote lectures, one by Jonathan and one uh, by Victor Wind. And these talks were followed by a public engagement performance by Lynn Liu and Samantha Sweeting in homage to Carrington's well-known novel, The Hearing Trumpet, 1976. So their, their version of The Hearing Trumpet was first staged in 2011, the year that she died, um, in Hackney, London. And I invited Liu and Sweeting to repurpose this artwork for exhibition in Leeds. The antique Hearing Trumpet performance object has been exhibited for the duration of this show as a relief sculpture attached to the wall with a hidden sound component. If audience members bent down, they heard Sweeting whispering secret stories from anonymous audience members. Um, and these 18 guilt-ridden micro-narratives related by members of the audience were revealing in their frank structures, tragic tones and psychoanalytic content, for example. I used to read my sister's diary and cry over the bits about her sexual explorations with her boyfriend. She would find me curled up and sobbing and would try to comfort me. I never told her why I was crying. I was too afraid of losing her. And another one. I stole from my grandmother's purse. Everyone thought she was going senile because she kept declaring that she was missing cash. The combination of low-level lighting, murmuring sounds, and the raw immediacy of the artistic duet in this performance space served as the ideal uh, environmental factors for a public confessional. For the second iteration of this performance in Leeds, they aligned the audience engagement dimension much more closely with Leonora's exhibits, particularly at the level of um, animal art. So creatures, both real and imaginary, were a major aspect of the exhibition. Cats, badgers, monkeys, salamanders, snakes, and other more unclassifiable homunculi congregate in Leonora's otherworldly domains. Sweeting is another example of someone who has worked extensively with human-animal relationships, or the fur of the fairy tale. Sweeting is perhaps best known for the extremely raw poetics of her postgraduate performance practice from London and Dartington, especially a body of work produced between 2006 and 12 in which she invited a range of lambs, kittens, and humans to suckle from her breasts, complicating biblical virgin and child iconography, and for One. me, reminding me of that 
amazing hyena image in the inn of the dawn horse, you know, with the lactating nipples. One more minute. Okay. So, on this occasion, Sweeting invited me as curator to dispense Victorian-inspired animal snap cards with a delicate instruction sheet. Individual audience members were encouraged to find their familiar, often a stranger, and tell them their most intimate childhood secrets. As before, Sweeting then collected ideas through a game of Chinese whispers, in which secrets might be miscommunicated or ideas misheard. And she delivered these secrets to Lin Lu. And because we had quite a large audience, two packs of uh, animal snap cards were required, so little groups of animal familiars started congregating. And the three toads took the game quite seriously and have uh, started a monthly lunch club. Um, which was an unanticipated but rather empowering uh, outcome of this performance, which was intending to break the ice between potentially like-minded audience scores. Um, and once again, secrets were collected, then whispered by Sweeting through an anti-curing trumpet into the ear of Lou, who then breathed onto a glass window and wrote the words with her finger, so that everyone's deepest, darkest secrets would be legible for a moment before disappearing. Thank you very much.